Hello everybody, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to the YouTube video. We're still looking at some try hack me. So let's hop on over to my screen and get to it. I want to showcase the overpass room because I just kind of found it and I thought it was really kind of interesting and neat idea. I also saw there is overpass two that is out right now and I want to pour into that. But uh, first we got to get through with the starting thing. So this theme or the kind of prompt for this box is what happens when some broke computer science student makes a password manager. Um, I have already submitted flags for this, so please forgive me and that those are visible there, but we'll dive in as to how to get to those and find them as we always do. So it says, obviously, it's a perfect commercial success whenever computer science students try to make a password manager. And there's also a little Easter egg. They say there is a Try Hack Me subscription code hidden on this box. First person to find it and activate it will get one month subscription for free. If you're already a subscriber, you can just give the code away and do some good stuff. Uh, uh, but that has already been claimed. This room is about a month old. I, just, I realize my face is kind of in the way, so you can't see that message there. But anyway, we have our machine IP address. It's up and it's running and I'm connected to the VP. VPN. So let's get started and try and work with it. I will make directory for YouTube overpass so we have a place to work and I'll get started with an nmap scan while we kind of put together our notes document. So nmap tac sc for default scripts, tac sv to search for versions, tac on so I nmap output to a simple nmap format and of course I'll paste in the IP address. All right, uh, while that's running, let's make a simple readme file so we can kind of keep track of things. I tend to do that just because it's good practice. Sometimes while I'm doing this video, I might just sort of forget. Please forgive me. And it is currently August 18th, 2020, and I'll slap my name in there. Maybe if you just end up like throwing this in GitHub or something, or you're just sharing your notes in your repository, who knows what you're working on. Um, we'll just go ahead and copy these prompts here, slap them in, good enough. Easy peasy. I realize there is a uh, like try hack me API that you could use. It's like a library in Python and I need to tinker with that because I want to write a script that could do something like this for larger rooms that have like more information in them because that way uh, you'll just automatically have this readme and you won't have to really work with much. We've got some interesting stuff open. Our nmap scan is up in an accessible. So let's check that out. Looks like we have port 22 open. So classic SSH, looks like it's running on Ubuntu and port 80 HTTP and it's Golang. Interesting. You don't often see that. Very cool. Okay. Um, Looks like that's it. Looks like we only have those two ports. Just to be safe, uh, let's turn off those safe scripts or whatever those are and <laughs> let's run our all port scan with hack p tack. All those. There we go. Let's get started to run that and let's explore that web page while we know that that's a thing. All right, just opening up the IP address in our web browser. It says, welcome to Overpass, a secure password manager with support for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and more. This is interesting because you, it's like an actual, like relatively somewhat of a web page here. <laughs> People reuse the same password for multiple services. If you're one of them, you're risking your accounts being hacked by evil hackers. Overpass allows you to secure different passwords for every service, protected using military grade cryptography to keep you safe. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> passwords never transmitted over the internet. In any form, unlike password managers, Overpass does not store your passwords, unlike other password managers. Download Overpass today. All right, let's check out the source. Uh, I just hit Control U on my keyboard to do that. Um, it looks like they are loading like local JavaScript <laughs> and console log, hello world. So if I were to go back to the page and check out the console tab, yep, you can see that guy right there. Nice, cool, great. I'm also just gonna take a look at the CSS file in case they hide anything in there. I think that's kind of good practice, just something good to do. Images I'm not extremely concerned about. If we kind of run out of things to do, we could do like cheesy stego on that or some other reconnaissance, but. Oh, there's an HTML comment here. Yeah, right, just because the Romans used it doesn't make it military grade. Change this? Ah, okay. Romans using secure cryptography that hints towards like rot 13 and caesar ciphers right so okay that's clearly not 
incredibly strong cryptography. There's a downloads page, so let's go check that out. Hop on over here. Stay safe against hackers, use overpass. Oh, and they have pre-compiled binaries. And they have the source code. Nice. Okay, anything else in this? Overpass go, build scripts. Those are, these are all in like a specific directory. Build us. Oh, what's in that about us page? Sorry, before I forget, I just kind of want to keep looking around. Anything here in this source? Nope, nothing hiding. Ninja. Oh, I like that Cymax is in there. Ninja. Cool. Oh, this is really cool. All the, all the try hack me guys. I love it. Great. Okay, let's take a look at this code that they're showcasing here. Source code and build script. Let's look at this thing. Oh, I already have these files downloaded. That's embarrassing. They're still in my uh, downloads folder. Who cares? Illusion, art, artifice. Um, let me make a directory for like source and let's move downloads overpass dot source. Yeah, it's dot go, sorry, into here. Same thing with build. I still have the, the binary itself. .sh. We'll put that in here as well. So let's take a look at those. Let's take a look at the source code over past Go. And it's written Go. Kind of neat. I wish I were smarter in Go. I wish I could just like write Go like as well as I could write Python because that language is crazy cool. And it's able to do stuff like everywhere other than the like scripts and binaries being like megs in size. But okay, it looks like a passless entry is a structure. So it has a name and a password, and a function for ROT47. Excellent. The secure encryption algorithm blatantly ripped and stolen <laughs> from this URL. Okay, incredible. Uh, I will press the I believe button on that and say that that just does regular ROT47, at least for now. If it does do anything else and we just don't see it, then whatever, we don't, we don't need to wear with it. We can go ahead and reverse engineer it as needed. Save creds to file. Where does it save all these? Does it have a path, like a default path? Load creds from file, JSON, input. Oh, Python style input function, neato. Service search, password for service. I'm just kind of like Slowly cursory looking through these to get an idea for kind of what these functions are and what they do. I don't think, like there's no obvious glaring, like, okay, bad eval or unsafe function that might be sticking out, but it's good to kind of peruse through this. Delete password from service, how does it do that? Pass not found, print all passwords, and it just loops through all of them, okay. Oh, creds path is in the home directory dot overpass. Good to know. And that's probably stored in some like marshalized or whatever JSON format as we saw up top. Okay. And we have this menu here and just a little command line interface to answer or select one option. That's pretty easy enough. They did have the binaries, so we could just kind of tinker with it and play with it. Um, let's do that. Oh, what was that build script? Sorry, before I forget. Build script.sh. Go OS or goose, which is always fun. That's in go setting an environment variable for how to install it and work with it. Overpass go. Does it just do it for like literally everything? That's awesome. And echo Date hack our builds completed. Ooh. It's just kind of like command inject, command substitution in there to get the date. Maybe we could potentially abuse that at some point. Obviously, we're just like, we've downloaded this locally, but we are supposed to get into this box somehow. So we should mess with that. All right, whatever. Uh, let's take a look at the binary. You could download it. I have already downloaded it. I'm just going to grab the Linux one. Uh, it didn't download because I didn't click it hard enough apparently, but I still have the binary doing it earlier. So let's move that in here and let's look at it. It is, oh, I realize typing at the bottom of my screen might annoy you, sorry. Let's mark that as executable overpass Linux and run it. There we go. Yeah, let's, let's just hop over into 
uh, another window up here. So I'm not at the very bottom of my screen because I, I heard some people say like, hey, I don't like to read it because the YouTube play stuff gets in the way. So here we go. Welcome to Overpass. Retrieve a password for a service. One. Uh, John. That's it. It died. Okay. Retrieve all passwords. John. Oh, again, this also still exists because of my home directory dot overpass. Man, I'm really ruining the illusion here, right? So this is Rod 47. This is the weird uh, notation that it's apparently encrypting and storing all this stuff in. Um, keep note, you can normally identify Rod 47 by the weird random uh, sheer amount of punctuation marks. Uh, and I'll just do a simple, stupid online ROT47 decoder. Slap that in. Decrypt. Okay, yeah, so now you might be able to see I have John, John. John is the name and John is the password. Super boring, but that's how it would simply work. Okay. So now that we've looked at this code and we've looked at this source, we've looked at this build script, we've looked at the executable, I don't see a whole lot else here. Uh, and since they give us like an actual website, sometimes you're like, oh, wait, whoops, I for I spent so much time exploring the website that I forgot to run my regular normal enumeration procedures. So don't forget, fire up that simple Nikto. I'll t that to nikto.log if I can type, right? I'll also do the same with a little GoBuster. We'll do a GoBuster dir tack you with that URL and we'll use a W for my word list and that I store the directory list medium over in my op directory and we will fire that off. Okay, we'll see what that comes up with. Realistically, we probably should have been running that <laughs> while we were looking through it. Oh, did it fail? And that HTTP client, is that the right? That is the right IP address. Can I ping that thing? Oh, sorry. Yep. Is it just because Nikto is working? That's funny. Error running Goobster. I don't know if you can see that uh, typo there. Nice. Let's do it again. Maybe I'll stop Nikto. We'll let GoBuster have a little bit of precedence here. Still dies. All right, let me pause and figure this out. Well, you know what, it might be that annoying nmap scan beating it up. Maybe I don't need a last, lasting forward slash. Let's see if that will work. There we go. All right, turning off the nmap scan, just kind of let it do its thing. That's fine. About us, downloads, IMG, we saw all that already. Oh, a slash admin. That is something we had not seen or looked at before. So let's hop over there, slash admin. Administrator access looks like we need credentials. Please log in to access this content. Okay. Uh, we could try the basic stupid admin admin. That doesn't work. Admin password. That doesn't work. We could try for basic stupid SQL injection or one equals one. Oh. Using two hyphens to do a SQLite comment using a hashtag or an octothorpe to, to do it with the SQL syntax. My SQL syntax, switching it up to a single quote or a double quote for strings, none of those work. Okay. Is there anything on this page that's interesting? Body on lab. Another CSS file. Okay, nothing there. Interesting anyway. Main.js as usual. Oh, but there's a login.js and a cookie.js. That's peculiar. What is that cookie? Oh, okay. That's just a regular minified library use in other places, JS cookie, MIT license. So that might not be too interesting for us. How about login.js? Okay, yeah, this looks custom. This looks, this looks like it's just written specifically for this. So we have a post data function with the URL data, response await, fetching a URL with the post method, credentials, headers, URL form encoded, follow any redirect, get the body, and then return the response. Okay, sometimes it's not always JSON. That's peculiar. Encode form data, that looks like it just kind of puts it into like a, yeah, like, okay, post data format. 
on load, which is just, we saw in the source code that would r like run as soon as the page loaded. Okay, it would look for a login. On you clicking submit, it will run login function rather than submitting the form as HTML normally would. So this login function is where all the interesting stuff happens. Okay, we have username box, which is getting all the information out of that field. Same thing with password, same thing with login. Text content equals nothing. Creds is just going to be little dictionary, associative array, hash table with the values pulled from the fields. And we will post to that resource API login with our creds. And it'll get a constant status or cookie with a response object from that post data function returning, okay? And then we do a check on client side code in JavaScript. So if the status or cookie is equal, equal, equal to incorrect credentials, then we know that failed, gotcha. Or otherwise, huh, oh, we set a cookie, session token, session status or cookie window location okay so it brings us to the exact same page it just has a cookie working but that's interesting because what could that value be obviously if it's just not like incorrect credentials it could just be like literally anything right like what what could that be if we were to set that would that work if we just set that to like anything literally we could control that because a cookie is something we can tamper with just as easily. Let me um, try that in curl. So let's make GoBuster shut up and let's try to close out some of these because we don't need these to take up the entire terminal for us. Um, let's hop over to the original page, right? And let's try and curl that just to get it from the command line. I don't have like a cookie editor thing quickly installed, like a cookie editor browser plugin or manager on my Firefox or my Chrome here. So I'm just gonna use a simple curl for a proof of concept. I'm gonna sp specify tag h to use a header. Will that work? I'd, I'd have to use like a set cookie thing. Um, I think curl just has like a tag tag cookies. Yeah. Nope, cookies is unknown. Is it cookie? Yeah, a cookie requires a parameter. Okay, quick troubleshooting <laughs> to see if that command line argument actually exists. Uh, so we'll specify, what was the name of that? Session token. Yeah, and we'll set it equal to literally anything. And we have a private key. <laughs> okay, so I guess that did work. Um, since it's all JavaScript, we could probably do the exact same thing. Um, this code would run in the context of this window because it's pulling in that cookie.js. So if I were to open up the console again and just slap this, this syntax in, uh, status or cookie is not defined, that variable we could just set once again, like literally anything. Now if I were to refresh this page, that cookie is set and we can see it <laughs> in our browser. So since you keep forgetting your password, James, I've set up SSH keys for you. If you forget the password for this, crack it yourself. I'm tired of fixing stuff for you. Also, we really need to talk about this military-grade encryption. Nice. Okay, so here's a private key. Reading that prompt, it sounds like we need to crack a password for this thing. So uh, let's make a directory for SSH and slap this in here as an IDRSA. Uh, don't forget to include a private key at the, uh, excuse me, include a new line at the very, very end of your private key. That can trip you up sometimes if it says like unknown format or something. Um, let's mark it as our own, so chmod600. And I'm assuming we'll have a username James because it references this, this individual James here. So, Let's grab that IP address and try to SSH tag I with that IDRSA, James at this IP address, not a URL, please. Thank you. See if that will work for us. Yep, I'm totally cool with connecting to it. Let's do it. We need a passphrase. Okay, uh, let's do that with John the Ripper. So I have uh, opt rocku.txt. I have this regular word list for brute forcing. That's just in my op directory. There's tons and tons of stuff. 
And I also have John the Ripper. So that's in opt, John the Ripper, run John. If you don't have that installed, go grab it off of their GitHub repository. It's like Magnum Ripper, John the Ripper. It's a community edition. Jumbo John, I think it's, it's called. And then just do it. Go into the source directory, do a dot slash configure, and do it make and install, and it'll build it all for you. So super easy, super cool. Let's run John on. Uh, actually, we need to convert this specific format, right? Because John will offer some scripts like SSH to John that will use a file format and kind of convert it into something that John the Ripper could work with. So I'll just make a for John dot text. That's good. Now with that done, we can run John on that for John dot text, but let me specify the wordless here. I'll use opt rock you as that wordless for him and I'll run for John and let's see if he gets a hit and he does. Okay, so James 13 is apparently that password. Cool, cool. That's glove fun. <laughs> what are you doing over there, John the Ripper? What are you doing? Let's just stop that actually, because I don't need this extra session when I still have that in my command history. This thing, connect to it please. And the password should be James13. Good, good, good. Did I type that right? Let it connect. Okay, let me pause this video real quick. <laughs> okay, that took forever, but I have code execution. I'm on the box. I am SSH'd in. So, okay. In our home directory, as this James user, I can see a user.txt file, which we will clap out here, cat that out, crap that out, all the words, and... Uh, that will give us our points for that user. Uh, then we also have a little to-do.txt, which is interesting. Update over pass encryption. Murlin has complaining that it's not strong enough. Yeah. Write down my password somewhere on a sticky note so that I don't forget it. Wait, we make a password manager. Why don't I just use that? Test over pass for Mac OS. It builds fine, but I'm not sure it actually works. Ask Paradox how we got around, how we got the automated build script working and where the builds go. They're not updating on the website. Ah. Automated build script. Is it still, is it like running here? Because I know we had that thought we could maybe like get in the middle of that date command running or something. Did not, okay, whatever. Let's uh, see if we have a password. He mentioned he has been using the password manager. Oh, and we have an overpass file. Okay, so that hidden directory again, right? So let's cat out that overpass and we see his information. It's simple rot 47. So I had that rot 47 decoder online. I could just once again slap that in. Go name the system, pass, see, drawnling picture. Okay, whatever. Is system referring to like this system? System? Like, would I be able to like sudo tag L? Like, is that his password? I paste that in. Okay, that is his password, but James can't run sudo. Boring. Okay. Um, we could do a regular enumeration. What's in the, is our, are there any other users we get into? There's a try hack me user. Nope, can't get into that. Anything in root? Nothing particularly interesting. Okay, so let's throw like Lin Enum or Lin P's in here and let's see if we can find a way to around this. Um, I am going to use Gwake, which I use as part of my cheesy like poor man's pen test framework ideas uh, because I would like to be able to upload or download a file, right? So I have these commands like upload file with netcat or like wget or other method to get a file on the box. Normally, if you're using this with, with Pwncat, it's much better. And we could get like a Pwncat shell if we wanted to. But I'll just showcase this one because I think Lenina might highlight some things a little bit better uh, for your learning and for us to walk through this together. So let me show you like what that is before I just totally say that this is what we're going to do and then you don't understand any of it. So uh, let's fire that up in Sublime Text. I'm using my PMP or opt poor men's pen test functions and that will grab like my IP address, my local host IP address so it knows, or my ton zero IP address, excuse me, so it knows how to reach the VPN in that box. 
back and forth. Then go random port. It'll specify a file name out of this little uh, dollar sign. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> out of this command line argument we pass in. We'll hide Quake, which is how I'm using to invoke this, um, and we'll get focus back to our actual window. And we will run a netcat listener grabbing this file on our host, and then we'll send the command with XTE or X automation to simulate typing in uh, on the victim, this netcat command to download and pull this file in. So that's all that that's doing, this silly poor man's pen test because I'm like automating keystrokes inside of my reverse shell. So I can quote unquote script inside of it. You don't have that real functionality, but PwnCat will let you do that. So I would always recommend to use PwnCat, but I guess I'm just not in this case. Stupid me. Let's upload LinPs. There we go. That slapped in. I'm going to give it a second. I'll check. Okay, yeah. Gwake says it's got everything. It's done. So let me like close out of that. And it just threw it in DevSHM, shared memory, because I like to hide in there. File that. It is a shell script, so let's run it and let's dot slash that. Okay, marked as executable. We're gonna get a ton of stuff. I'm using kind of the one of the later versions of LinPs, I think, or at least newer than I had ran previously, because now it'll cache directories or like be able to figure out a lot of good stuff. So we'll let that go and then we'll start to look through it. I guess we can kind of look through it as it's going. So nothing wrong with that. LinPs. We have ping, we have netcat, incredible. Old pseudo version, good to note. Kind of exploring and see if there's anything that just jumps out. Linpiece is great because it'll color code things that are potentially or very, very likely a privilege escalation utility. Useful software, we have a lot. Python, we have base64, all these things. We have compilers. Goodness. Root is running some stuff. Cron. Cron's in there. Why are they running Cron? I wonder if that's that automatic build script. Cron jobs has some. Yeah. Those are all defaults. They look like defaults. Oh, what is that line? So that's cron syntax. So every minute of every day, every hour of every day of every month. Uh, as the user root, interesting, we will curl over pass.thm, looks like a little host name or a domain name, download source build script.sh and pipe it to bash. Whoa, okay, funky. That is a, an obvious and egregious method that we could abuse to privilege escalate. Because if root's running that, then we'll get code execution as root if that's just getting piped into bash. Can we control that though? That overpass.thm, where are they setting that domain name? That's normally in its etcetera hosts. Do we have write access to etc. hosts? That's normally a weird thing. Host name, okay, yeah, we can see that. Host name, host and DNS. That's that's definitely the output of our etc. hosts file. But can I write to that? That's an odd listening port. Super users are root. Yep. Okay, try hack me looks like try hack me has a lot of privileges. He's in pseudo. Blah 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 blah. R sync stuff. Possible private keys. Yep, we found those. We have those. Cloud on it files, sewage files, nothing stands out to me. Capabilities, weird to see a CD-ROM file, okay. <laughs> Modified interesting, oh, GPG stuff, that's peculiar. Writable log files, backup files. All hidden files, there's a lot in here. Whoa, okay, I don't need to see all that. Interesting writable, interesting writable files owned by me or writable by everyone that are not in my home directory. Etc. Hosts is in the list. Okay. Okay, cool. So 
if we can modify et cetera host, then what we could do is we could act as that curl command, right? That was in, oh boy, I got to find it again now. It was the curling overpass.thm slash downloads slash source build script.sh pipe to bash. And that would run like every minute, right? So if I were to try and do that now, looks like it's getting, okay, the one off of this website, but let's modify that. So right now, let me change this profile. This will be the victim that we're in. And this will be my server, my machine, because I want to know my IP address. If I could type ton zero IP address, address show my IP address there. And let's modify that et cetera host file because we do have write access in there supposedly. And let's change the overpass THM location and make it my address, yeah? So that way if I were to ping overpass.thm, you can see now I'm actually reaching my attacker machine. Great. So let's make a little directory for ourselves and we'll like fake and simulate, like pseudo create the same file structure as what that command is expecting in cron as it's running every minute. So let me make, let's see, it's a downloads source and then we have the script itself. So let's make attack P to make all of those directories. Let's hop in there and let's create a simple bash script build script.sh that will bin bash. There we go. And we can have this do literally whatever we want because that will be executed through bash. Um, I think the easiest way to give us accessible root privileges is make the bash binary set UID. So that way we'll be able to like, I don't know, invoke it and keep our root privileges. So it, right now, if you check out the permissions on bin bash. Sure, it is an owned by root executable, but it doesn't have a sticky bit set or it's not set UID. Um, using that, we could just invoke it with TAC P and that way we could maintain root readily and easily. You could do other things like call back a reverse shell or whatever you want, but I want to kind of keep me in this for simplicity's sake. All right, let's hurry it up because we're getting to a really long video and just really doesn't need to be. So let's get back to the root of this directory, right? Let's actually watch this LS tack LA and see when it's going to hit. Looks like I still have like half a minute to go. And this will, we know from the cron output, this will happen on the clock every minute on the minute. So let's fire up my HTTP server. And that's going to listen on port 8000 by default. So if I want to specify port 80, I could specify that as a last argument, but we need root privileges to do that on my Ubuntu system. So let me sudo python tack m that, type in my password as fast as I can. Great, now we are very, very close to the end of the minute. So we should see a get request come through on our attacker machine, done. And we should see this switch to an S or a sticky bit, set UID. All right, so let's stop watching that and let's bin bash Tag P, and now we're root. Very, very cool. We were just abusing that little curl command that's in cron that is uh, running commands as root, and it's pulled from an external resource, or at least we can control where that resource is because it's in etc. host file that we have write access to. So we could hop on over to root, and we could simply cat out that root.txt and be done with it. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, the Easter egg... If you wanted to, you could go find that, uh, whoa, careful there, John. <laughs> if you wanted to do, you could go check out Try Hack Me, uh, that user account that we saw, he does have an overpass account. So we could cut out that file and see what other information that might have. As usual, it's just ROT47, so we could go hop over to this little decoder, decrypt that, and kind of cheesy, there's a little Try Hack Me subscription code, but someone has already found that, right? No sense trying to submit it, but very, very neat, very, very cool, very, very fun. I really liked the idea of this box, and that was kind of fun. Um, 
and it was cool to kind of work through some of those and I like that simple etc host trick so I hope you guys thought that was also very neat very enjoyable um, take good notes if that's something that you want to do as usual I started the readme file and then did nothing with it whatsoever but uh, hey thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press that like button do the YouTube algorithm things leave me a comment hopefully subscribe thank you you guys are the best. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.